Hello there, my name is Forrest and I'm here to give you a little bit of an introduction to Year One with Tempest Clan. I've seen a lot of these clan gen videos going around and I was a warrior's kid growing up and really wanted to check it out. So I did and I got hit with a lot of nostalgia of making up clans and characters with my friends when I was younger and even making up uh, characters with my friends a few days ago. Um, but I really wanted to try my hand at making a clan gen video and sharing the funny little cats that came about from it. I did also want to mention that I have very little experience with all of this, so I'm really, really sorry if there's any big audio issues. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, let me tell you about the founding events of Tempest Clan. Tempest Clan was founded by the surviving members of Tide Clan, whose homes had been destroyed by a terrible storm. So much loss made many of them hesitant about clan life, but under the guidance of Star Clan and the warrior Floodsting, the remaining clan cats, as well as some new members, journeyed to their new home. Upon arriving to their new home, they decided to name this new clan after the storms that had ripped apart their old clan, in honor of those who were lost, but also in recognition that they are no longer the same clan but in fact something new. So I meant to follow the allegiance order for the sake of organization, but I made a slight mistake in coloring the deputy of Tempest Clan first, so I'll be talking about him first. Uh, Clover Whisker is an ambitious cat who was appointed to be deputy at just 20 moons old. And because of his young age, he's been dealing with some worries that his older clanmates don't respect him much. On a lighter note though, this year he got to see his apprentice earn her warrior name. Uh, the two have actually drifted apart a lot since then, but he holds a lot of fond memories uh, from training Cobalt Fur, and hopefully the two of them will get close once again. They were so cute in uh, her apprentice months that I really hope to see them get along again. And Clover Whisker, while ambitious, he has no desire to be leader just yet and really wishes that Floodstar would stop putting himself in dangerous situations just to impress him. Uh, he's very uncomfortable in social situations, and I feel some kinship with that. I headcanon him as autistic, and he just happens to have special interests that align with the duties of a, a warrior, and that helps him be very, very good at his job. I'm really excited to see how he does over the next years, and I hope that Floodstar gives him a little bit of peace of mind, finally. And speaking of Floodstar, he is the founding leader of Tempest Clan and already lost a life this year when he saved his clanmate Nimble Whisker from drowning. Uh, he was able to make it to his clanmates, but they hadn't realized how tired the leader had become and he sunk beneath the waves before they could react. He is extremely self-sacrificing. His loyalty to his clanmates and his extra lives makes him more willing to put himself in the way of harm if it means protecting them. Even if it drives his clan crazy. When he is injured, he is a terrible patient and the whole clan just really wishes that he would take better care of himself so that they didn't have to deal with a sick flood star. Uh, he also got to see his apprentice graduate this year, though, in lighter news, Bleak Tuft. Uh, the two weren't very close, but he respects his former apprentice a lot and is keeping a close eye on him. And he also knows how to leave me in suspense, because the last month of the year he decided 
to declare war on Lion Clan. Uh, I'll cover the reasons behind that decision a bit more later as they come up with each cat. Uh, but we're shaking, shaping up to have a very eventful start to the next year, and I just hope that Floodstar is able to guide his clan through it safely. Especially for the sake of the medicine cat, Egret Fleck, who's had a lot of struggles this year. Uh, he's a very insecure cat, and over the course of the, the year learned a lot about treating his clanmates with more respect, especially after being properly berated by Cobalt Fur on behalf of her best friend while she was still an apprentice. And despite being a medicine cat, Egret Fleck never really had a connection to Star Clan, and all his pride in his ability came from his skills as a healer. But he's been struggling with a lot of memory issues lately. He seems to not be able to remember where to find herbs on patrol and has been mixing them up a lot. And it's been worrying a lot of his clanmates, especially Bleak Tuft, who cares a lot about the old cat and spends the most time with him. He really worries, especially with this war, that his fading memory will leave the clan vulnerable especially since he hasn't taken on an apprentice yet, but luckily for him uh, there seems to be a cat who has a knack for learning herbs and who seems to have a strong connection to their ancestors, so he doesn't quite yet feel like all hope is lost and he's just really praying to Star Clan that nothing too terrible happens in this war and that all his clanmates stay as safe as possible. Moving along in the Allegiance, we have the most senior warriors, Nimble Whisker and Rosy Stripe, who I paired together because the two of them are basically a package deal. Rosy Stripe is the younger of the two and is very withdrawn from his clanmates, despite several of them really having a strong crush on him. He lost his mate and children in the storm that took his home, and ever since he's had a really hard time opening back up to his clanmates. And sadly, this year wasn't very kind to Rosie Stripe. He watched as his former apprentice Lightning Fang was burned alive while saving a clanmate during a storm, and this devastated him as he'd come to see Lightning Fang as a son helping to take care of him even when he was still a kid. And after Lightning Fang's death, he closed himself off from the clan more, and I really, really hope that we get to see him recover from his grief and let more of his clanmates in over the next year, because they really want to be there for him in this hard time. And this also made him realize that despite his feelings towards Nimble Whisker, he isn't ready to take another mate now, and he honestly may never be. And speaking of, Nimble Whisker is the oldest warrior in the clan, and she's pretty insecure about this fact because she can tell she's starting to slow down in her older age. Sadly, she takes this out on some of her other clanmates by spreading rumors about them at gatherings and bullying them. Usually Rosy Stripe keeps her in check, but after Lightning Fang's death, he really hasn't had the energy to tell her off. But I think almost drowning this year helped her put herself in perspective. Floodstar sacrificing one of her his lives to save hers made her feel like maybe she was wasting that sacrifice by being such a bully to her clanmates, because she had a lot less negative interactions with all her clanmates after that happened, so I really hope that that turns over a new leaf for her and she starts getting along with her clanmates better. Next in the order is Oddspeckle. She is a very, very protective cat and usually resorts to violence when she's pushed. She's also a very small cat, about half the size of most of her clanmates, so she always feels like she's got to prove her worth and make up for her size. 
She has had quite the year. Uh, she fought off a dog that had attacked her and her apprentice. On a lighter note, she got to see her apprentice graduate and earn her warrior name. And to top it all off, she had a litter of kittens with a Lion Clan warrior who had taken advantage of her insecurity in her place in the clan. And when giving birth to her kittens, Odd Speckle was trapped in the nursery as it caught on fire. And if it hadn't been for Lightning Fang throwing her out of the den right as it collapsed, none of them would have survived. The kitten's fathers originally wanted nothing to do with them, but when they were weaned, he came with a battle patrol to claim them, giving Floodstar a week to decide, and Odd Speckle, in her blunt way, told him quite point-blank that she would leave if he even considered letting Lion Clan take them, as before the clan was founded, she had been a rogue. Her former apprentice, Ragged Scratch, stood by her side through it all, and she was so relieved when he said he wasn't going to give them up without a fight. And then she was overwhelmed by all her clanmates, even though they knew she broke the warrior code, supporting her through it all. Even Rosie Stripe, who let her know after months of blaming herself that he didn't blame her for Lightning Fang's death, and he knew his apprentice would never have traded the lives of her and her kittens for his own, even if he could go through time and do it over again. All of this support left Odd Speckle just feeling an overwhelming amount of love towards her clan, and she is extremely protective of everyone in it. She would lay down her life for any of them, and I really hope that she gets to have a calmer year next year, and that she gets to bond more with her clanmates. Following Odd Speckle, we have a later addition to the clan. Lady is a former kitty pet who joined Tempest Clan on the invitation of Ragged Scratch after escaping an abusive owner. She's also now the largest cat in most of the clans, being a purebred Maine Coon. In her first few months with the clan, she attempted to hunt across the border with Spring Clan, but was mauled by a border patrol that happened to be remarking that specific border at the time. Sadly, an infection set into her leg, and in order to save her life, Egret Fleck had to remove it. It took her a bit of time and grieving to be able to move forward from losing her leg again, but she's learned how to compensate for it in her hunting and fighting, and she's been spending a lot of time with Odd Speckle and her kittens, lending a paw when Ragged Scratch isn't able to. Um, she hasn't had too much time to really get to know her clanmates, but I'm really excited to see how she does in the future. And she also has a small crush on Odd Speckle, which I think is really cute. So I hope that those two get the chance to bond a little more going on in, in the future. Now we're getting to the younger warriors of the clan. Uh, Cobalt Fur and Ragged Scratch have been having an interesting dynamic ever since the clan started so I wanted to draw them together to highlight that a little bit. Uh, Cobalt Fur only ever disliked Ragged Scratch because she bullied her a lot as an apprentice. When she became a warrior, Cobalt Fur spoke with Odd Speckle about Ragged Scratch's rude attitude and she learned a bit of why she was so prickly. It didn't make her okay with it, but she was more able to understand the why behind it. And while Ragged Scratch's year was mostly in her growth, Cobalt Fur had a very difficult end to her year. Before helping with the founding of Tempest Clan, she was a kitty pet and never knew her family. But when a cat joined late in the year, she learned that her mother had been trying to find her and her brother Bleak Tuft since they were taken from her. This reunion, sadly, was short-lived as only a month later, Lark Splash was chased into a thunderpath and killed. 
Cobalt Fur was devastated and she became angrier than she'd ever been at the world and I really hope that with Bleak Tuft and eventually Ragged Scratch's support she'll be able to move past her grief but that really remains to be seen. When the clan was founded, Ragged Scratch, then Ragged Paw, thought she despised Cobalt Paw. The two even had a pretty public fight while she was recovering from her dog attack. After earning her name and spending more time with Cobalt Fur because they kept being assigned together in patrols, she initially grew even more frustrated with the other cat. It took some prodding from Odd Speckle, who had known her since she was a young kitten, being raised by a very, very harsh parent, for her to start to feel safe enough in the clan to talk about her feelings. She realized that she never actually hated Cobalt Fur, and instead was only taking her dislike of herself out on the other warrior. And as the two spent more time together, after Ragged Scratch apologized and acknowledged her poor treatment of Cobalt Fur, she was mortified to realize that she had developed a small crush on her once sworn enemy, and she's been hiding herself away from Cobalt Fur more and more ever since, trying to push her feelings down again, and I'm really hoping next year that she'll open up again and let more of her clanmates in, because Cobalt Fur definitely needs her support now more than ever. And now we get to the last of the clan's warriors. Bleak Tuft is a troublemaker who keeps getting stuck in the medicine den due to one injury or another, and despite his tendency for chaos, he's very big on giving cats a second chance. When he was an apprentice, his warrior ceremony was delayed more than once from him recovering from a heat stroke, and he was originally very wary of being in the medicine den at all on account of his dislike of Egret Fleck, but after the medicine cat apologized to him after being told off by Cobalt Paw, Bleak Tuft was willing to give him another chance. He didn't really have the chance to have an eventful year on account of him being in the medicine den for about seven of the moons this year, and he is still stuck in there with a festering tail wound because he won't say stay still and rest, uh, because he hates not feeling useful, and when Lark Splash died he felt guilty and blamed himself for not being able to be there with her. He's spent a lot of nights talking with Egret Fleck about Star Clan since her passing, and Egret Fleck actually started to teach him about herbs because Bleak Tuft wanted to lend a paw in the medicine den since he was stuck in there, and he turned out to be a bit of a natural. During his warrior ceremony, he was actually regretting his life choices and wondering if he chose this right path, and with the instant comfort he found in the work of a medicine cat, he's been thinking about asking Egret Fleck if he'd take him as an apprentice. We'll have to see how that turns out, but I would really love to see Bleak Tuft become a medicine cat, because who doesn't love a troublesome medicine cat? And now we get to the kits of the clan. Odd Speckles Kits, Wave Kit, Lightning Kit, Shade Kit, and Flail Kit are currently the only kits in the clan, and they are little menaces. With their oldest sister, Lightning Kit, as a ringleader, they're constantly getting into trouble. Flail Kit does his best to seem above his siblings' pranks and play fights, but the whole clan knows he's just as much of a ruffian as his litter mates. Lightning Kit was, in fact, named in honor of Lightning Fang, and as she's growing up, uh, she started to feel a little bit of pressure that she has to be an amazing warrior to justify his sacrifice to save her mom and her litter mates. Uh, with that, she started to pull back from her siblings and her clanmates a bit, and they've started to grow worried about her but they've also gotten old enough to start to understand that 
there's something going on around them. There's a weird cat who keeps showing up and saying he's going to take them home, and the warriors get really nervous talking about Lion Clan to them. Oddspeckle hasn't told her kits about their heritage. She didn't want that weight on their shoulders as they grew up, because her mistakes are hers to carry and atone for, and not her children. She knows that they'll find out one day, and she can only hope that they'll understand why she didn't tell them. And I'm really excited to see how they grow up, because Odd Speckle is such a personality, and so many of them share her passion for the clan. Uh, the real outlier is Shadepaw. She's just a small and kind sweetheart and I'm really excited to see how they all turn out and I hope that they all take care of each other and they all stay as close as they are now but we'll have to wait and see. Rounding off the living cats of the clan, Esper was a late addition and she really honestly didn't do too much she was a former clan cat who joined Tempest Clan and was a very strict warrior before she retired and got on everyone's nerves with her warrior code preaching. She was the only cat who openly didn't support Odd Speckle and thought that she and her kittens should be exiled, but despite her initial distaste towards them, she's actually grown quite close to them, especially Flail Kit, who she finds to be responsible and a courteous little cat that the warriors could learn a thing or two from. She's enjoying her retirement and I hope in her retirement she grows to be a little more open-minded and learns from her past uh, mistakes. In Star Clan we had two deaths this year. Lightning Fang burned alive while saving Odd Speckle and it was very upsetting because he had just turned a year old and he had worked so hard to become a warrior, even earning his warrior name early. In death, he watches over Rosie Stripe and has been a little disappointed to see him pulling away from their clanmates, but he knows the loss that he went through and understands that he needs some time to process all of it. He also learned that his father, Floodstar, was always there and he's found himself a little bitter that he never actually took the time to raise him but he also realizes that he had rosy stripe to watch out for him and any claim that floodstar had on being a father he lost Lark Splash was killed when a Lion Clan patrol chased her onto the Thunderpath and a monster happened to be speeding by. She's thankful it was fast and she didn't actually really have any time to feel afraid, but she really wishes that she had more time to get to know who her kittens had grown up into but she's found herself content in getting to watch over them and is proud of Bleak Tuft and Cobalt Fur, even if they've been really struggling in their grief. So that was the first year with Tempest Clan. Um, I hope you had some fun listening to the pretty intense beginning of this clan and I hope that you enjoyed. Uh, if I can figure out how to, I will put the link to download Clan Gen in the description below, as well as try and link the uh, Clan Gen videos that I saw that inspired me to do this. And I hope that you all enjoyed. Thank you for watching. <laughs>